Hello everyone and welcome to today's cast on the fly. You know, I haven't gotten dressed and done one of these cast on the flies in quite some time. Um, we're dealing with cold. It's cold in here. Um, and what I was coming on today to, to really discuss the psychosis associated to these people who are infiltrating the Hollywood sector and attempts to rise above Hollywood with content creator. So I guess that's where I'm going with this because we know and well, we kind of knew some of this shit was going down behind the scenes. If you've ever gone to Miami um, and tried to go to a club, which I have, it was a horrible experience. I thought it was terrible. I think I saw, I don't remember what club we went to, but they had a VIP section and they, they disturbed the entire club by uh, champagne bottles with that zzz, 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 shit and nobody was dancing and it was just not fun and I actually think Flo, my friend kept telling me Flo Rider was sitting right there and I was like I don't believe you and she's like yeah I swear to God and I said I don't really believe you and she said I swear that was the same night I went to another or a different night I went to another club and we sat there and waited for Akon until like I want to say it was like four in the morning, two in the morning. I was so damn pissed. I was like, I cannot believe this shit. And all he did was come out, look at me and wave. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? So you went home and you had a good night's sleep. Then you got up, you slowly got to the club. And I was like, this is some garbage ass shit. Anyway, what we're dealing with with this shit is like basically what I could compare it to royalty, but it not royalty of a good royalty. You know, like William and Kate are good royalty. They are, um, and I would say uh, Bro is good royalty also. So they're good people. Uh, William and what's your name? I can't remember what your name is right now. Although we do know that Andrew, Prince Andrew is a piece of shit and William the King is a piece of shit. So we know they're pieces of shit, right? But they aren't even as bad as these people. Because they have a secret side of them that they don't show in public. They're still pretty bad, but they're not this bad. Uh, they're a different kind of bad, I'd say. These kinds of people um, throw money at you as payment to be rude to you and abuse you without speaking out loud to abuse you. There's a whole lot of different dimensions to this. So these are poor people who went to normal schools and shit, who opened clubs and created this nasty, nasty, I, like I'm in it right now and it's fucking nasty. It's not cool. It's not entertaining. It's not fun. It's not relatable. It's not, it's not cool to be yourself. It's not cool to be educated. It's not cool to speak out against it because it's a cult. But this is like devil worshiping shit. This is a different form of devil worshiping shit. So if you take a look at Melissa Wood and Mona Van's content or Heather Moose's content, this is like B level, D, I would say more like D level, D level shit of garbage. And you're, you as entrepreneurs, they make you think that one day too, that you can be just like them, depending on what you look like. Or you're never going to be like me, so you might as well just worship the ground I walk on, and I will give you kudos. No, you, you want to know, like, at this point, even most of my content right now is calling people out on their shit. I haven't even started tapping into ways to heal yourselves. Like, everything that Gary Vee said in 12 and a half became their form of attacking you as an audience. So you knew in the old days that you didn't like Mona Van and you thought she was stupid and her content was boring. And then all of a sudden she created this form of sweetness associated to the 12 and a half. 
and then started researching people's content to see what people were interested in. So she called, you call it getting one. Now, when you're dealing with spiritual work, meditation, yoga practice, this is some heavy duty devil shit that they're up to. Meaning these people are like working with uh, energy of your whole entire life and collecting a paycheck. They're collecting a paycheck off of your disempowerment associated to their yoga practices. We literally saw Mona Van the other day doing a stretch session, but she didn't show herself stretching. She just filmed the dog next to her while she was stretching. We know she didn't actually sit on the floor and actually stretch. Just to let you know, a yoga practice is not stretching. That's, that's fake shit. That's boring shit. That's not physical fitness. That shit that Melissa Wood does is not physical fitness. It's starvation with a little bit of, of muscle work. It's a fucking joke, dude. These people are trying to educate you on how to empower yourselves in existence, but they're the ones disempowering you. They're disempowering you. So there's a lot of, lot of different perspective, perspectives to this that most of you aren't even paying attention to. See, I'm in all of these different sectors because I'm into yoga, I'm into meditation, I'm into weightlifting, I'm into clubbing, I'm into uh, self and profile, I'm into all this shit. Like I literally did stents in my life, running, marathon running. I'm sure there's a cult when it comes to this and, and separation of the weak versus the strong. It's like never fucking ending, but this is different. This is different than what the old days was, where we all were in our own tribes. We're, they're, they're spewing their tribes into other people's tribes because they want to make more money and they want to control you. While they compete within their low vibration, nasty, gargoyle tribe. So you want to take a look at the dude who has all the whores standing next to him as an example of what it really looks like. Dan, I think his name is Dan. Going to a party. And then all these whore looking prostitutes who like, you know how like some uh, strippers have scars on their legs from, from being beat down by their boyfriend. This are the, these are these women being beat down by some man because that's her pimp and she's collecting money and she's like inserting drugs into her uh, veins and shit. That's this, these people, that's these people. That's actually Mona Van. It just looks a little different. That's the same energy without the pimp beating her up because she's more powerful than the man is what she thinks. I said, that's what she thinks. Um, when they go to these parties, it's like fake person, fake person, fake person, fake person. And then they all say that they're friends. They will, they will actually stab you in the back in a heartbeat. And it's all a circuit association to money and attention within the circuit while they abuse millions to look cool. So it's almost like the worst side of a trust fund baby that you could ever take a look at. I mean, this is some, this is some dark ass shit. <laughs> the whole club thing of opening a club. I've been, I told you I've been to clubs in Vegas, right? I went to, well, I went to Vegas for New Year's one year. There was nobody there. I was the, the year that I won the $1,800. The weird part was, is that in my mind, I didn't have enough money. I had $1,800 to spend. 
But that's the mentality that they want you to have, the women want you to have, so that you'll stay out of the big time clubs. Because that's their territory. So we went to the hotel. I want to say we stayed at the Venetian, I think. I can't remember. My friend was a big time, um, he's a big time gambler. He spent $10,000 every time he went to the table. He's Asian, he's Korean, and made a lot of money. And he didn't really do a whole lot. And every year he liked to go gamble. He, just, he, you know, some people have a hobby with their money, like cars or this and that. His hobby was gambling. So he'd, he'd always have like a amount of money that he would spend, like uh, 50, he'd say $50,000. That's how rich he is. You know, so he's not like a billionaire or a millionaire. He might be a millionaire. I don't know. His dad was a dentist. Um, but he would say, I'm going to spend $50,000. And so he would go and win. Um, he would get, be up 20 grand and then be, it would, it would be like pennies to him though. He'd spend, you know, he'd, he'd gamble at the a hundred dollar table. So, you know, that kind of tells that those of you who gamble at, um, what do you call it? Uh, at the, at the casinos, what kind of roller he was in the place because he, they would call him and say, Hey, do you want to come stay for free? So you get a free room, so you would go down and spend $20,000. And they would give you, like, vouchers. For some reason, eventually, they started sending me shit in the mail. Anyway, I'm probably on video. I probably am. Because I went up to the table, and I was talking to him and stuff. And I, that was when I was walking around looking at all the tables. But anyway, that's beside the point. <clears throat> so we went to, we decided we were going to spend $50 because I didn't want to spend a whole, I didn't realize that you had to pay to get in the clubs, like $150. Like, really? And then they want you to spend $10 a drink and shit? So I was like, well, I don't really want to spend that much. And so we went to this country bar. There's like nobody in there and it was like nothing compared to what we were experiencing when we were, and these are people that we would party with in our hometown. And we were like, this shit sucks. So I'm not real sure what y'all think, you know, Vegas is all about. It's like shit. Miami shit. I've even been to a strip club in Miami with these h fucking hoes. And I was like, I was like, and I've been to a lot of strip clubs because I'm curious. I'm curious about that kind of stuff. I've been to a strip club in Denver. I've been to a strip club here in town. I've been to a strip club in Miami. Um, that's it. I think I've been to three. That's enough. I've been to a couple male strip shows. I went to the Vegas strip, uh, Magic Mike strip club. You know? So I'm like well-rounded and I'm not a prude, um, but that shit, what these people are up to is literally taking a strip club and trying to make it professional. Like as in like prostitution. That's what Gary's dating right now. See, y'all don't, didn't, y'all were not analyzing this from the very beginning. When, when he, the very first time that he took Mona and Heather Musa to Miami, there's video of the two of these whores walking down a dock. And it's an example of this Strauss dude and what these people are up to with these fucking prostitutes. It's like we needed the Playboy Mansion to control these whores. Because these people are out of fucking control. And you all know some weird ass shit went down at the Playboy Mansion. And these women ain't innocent in all of it either. And they all had associations to industry and plots against the artists such as people like Adam Levine and shit. I mean, Adam has a really good foundation, so I don't know, but anyway. Now, I've tried to kind of paint you a picture of how comical they are. White Chicks is literally a comedy example of how they are disgusting. Although, you want to know that they made it really... I actually really love that movie. I think it's fucking hilarious. 
He's like eating french fries with the dude that's forcing the girl. But the girl in real life would want to go with him because he has fucking money. Kim Kardashian shit. But it's way worse now. Now, what's happened since the, that movie and stuff is these bitches now think that they deserve to be entrepreneurs and terrorize people, although it doesn't look like terrorists. It's hard for me to get across to you that these bitches are terrorists because now you all want to act like them. You want to look like them. You want to act like them. You want to dress like them. Even if you have to go to TJ Maxx to go look like them and dress like them. That means you have no sense of self and how miserable you are. Because I'll ask you, are you miserable? You will say, no, I'm extremely happy. So tell me a little bit about your day to day. I wake up at 10 o'clock. I do my hair and makeup. I post a few pieces of content. I, I mean, I don't even know what to say, like what you actually, go take a look at Monovan's content. And then go deeper into the emotions associated with joy and happiness. And you tell me how that's fucking happiness. That's the crazy part. That's the disconnect to reality that they're hoping to push upon you that I can't really figure out a way to show it to you because you're so hypnotized by the way they look. I mean, I can relate to myself back in high school and like watching um, people and be like, that's fucking, I cannot believe her. I cannot believe how stupid she is. Taking it further to people that I worked with who were millennials. And then all of us were like, what a bitch. And it's not because we weren't welcoming. It's because they were fucking bitches. And one of them was featured in Playboy for um, a college edition or some dumb shit. She was a cunt bitch is what she was. Then what they'll try to do is they'll try to tell us that, that we were pissed. That they were trying to steal our money. Bitch, please. We didn't want to work seven days a week. We didn't want to work seven days a week. Nor did we want to work doubles. So do you see how that works so that they can look like the victims while we look like the villains? Where that other girl that was working there then tried to play off of a dude that I know to take his money. So we all went on a ski trip. No, we went on a mountain trip to North Carolina. And she was, oh my God, she was so annoying. That's how I know that millennial and Gen Z's are fucking dumb as shit. Because he's, he he's older than me. He's probably 55 now, or 50, 55. And she swooned him with bad personality and big titties. And, and tapped into his, his disempowerment of a divorce and a close, I don't know if your business was closed yet. And then tried and attempted to ruin our good time. However, we survived. And that's the guy who knows, um, uh, I know Warren Buffett came up. He might know Warren Buffett. Uh, what's his name? Um, no, not Doogie Howser. He might know Doogie Howser too. Um, Darius Rucker. He knows Darius Rucker like on a hangout basis. Ooh. Sorry, we're tapping into too much good energy because that's not that's not realistically um, what goes on with these parties. It's more like the Playboy on steroids, Playboy Mansion on steroids. So every time I look at a Gary Vee and a Motivan location of a party, I think to myself, "That is disgusting." And then she tries to push through the computer or the internet how sexy she is and how in love they are. And he just sits there. He just sits there, question mark. Or they all get together and manifest how they're going to destroy you as an audience. Because you don't actually really think that I'm the only one affected by this, do you? You don't think that his mom isn't affected by this, do you? 
or that his father or that his brother or that his sister or that his children. Do you think that his children are affected by what you post, Mona Vant? See, she doesn't give a shit. That's how you know that she is not going to marry him. And if you do marry her, you got fucking mental problems. Because the Democrat system is forcing people into relationships with people like that to control you as an audience for voter rights. Because I want you to know that New York City is a Democrat city. That's how the Democrats operate. And so they use these clubbers to give Cuomo a blowjob. This is, this is organized crime, folks. This is worse than Capone. They are attacking your children. They are filming your children. They are abusing your children. They are laying out a plan and plot for them to make money and for you and your family to suffer financially so that millennial and Gen Z's can retire at 25 while they then day trade $700,000 a day in fake ass podcasts where they expose everything that they're actually up to because they're not good at being um, quiet. Which is exactly what I exposed with the, the dude who, who wrote the 666 on my face. Perfect. I thought that was brilliant. So he thought he was being ugly, but he, he, he didn't believe me because nothing has come into fruition yet. But we are in an overthrow of governments across the globe. Globally. Of everybody in pain dealing with the exact same shit. Because I am Jesus is risen. And so they're doing whatever they can do to keep the devil in your face. Because people stop going to church and we're living in BC. And if, when you live in BC, you think Kim Kardashian's cool. That's before Christ, if you, in case you didn't know. I forget what AD means. It's after something. <laughs> I want to tell everybody at Art Basel, you're a bunch of fucking morons. You ask the same fucking questions over and over and over. I know Gary is answering the same dumb ass shit. Over and over again. Over and over again. It's like you never go anywhere because you never learn anything. And this ain't on Gary. This on your dumb ass who doesn't know how to experience your fucking life. See, you're always all out there looking to blame somebody else for your dumbass shit. While you then look at Monavan as if she's a fucking queen because she's got a big diamond on her finger. Look at how talented she is with her clean eating party. It's called OCD. And she didn't even do shit. She had a chef come in. Which means she didn't do shit. And it's not cool to tell people that you cook something when you didn't fucking cook it. Because that's called fucking lying. Everything about her is a fucking lie. Which is everything that's going on in these fucking dumbass parties. Now, you want to know that I worked as a fly on the wall, elegant elite parties. Elegant elite party. So what if I work? That's the best place to be when you are eavesdropping and when you're fucking spying, you dumb asses. Go watch Red Notice. That's where the fucking money's at. I always thought, yeah, I always felt like I was at the party, but I was working the party because I really didn't want to be at the party. But these people were like um, dancers in conversation of respectable individuals. respectable individuals who had women on their arms that wore clothes. That's why this shit, really actually part of this is why this shit fucking pisses me off. Because I know really, really, really uh, sophisticated rich women who were respectable to all people. Because you really, when you reach a certain level of wealth, you have to be, you have a responsibility as a wealthy person to help other people 
to lead by example and to be humble and grateful for all the shit that has been given to you. And you go over in Mona Van and Melissa Woods platform and look at what kind of parties they're attending. Look what places and people are showing up for their facility. And you tell me if that's a sign of humility or if that's a downfall of the whole fucking world. The hard and the worst part of all is either you don't see it or they don't see it. And that's called a blind spot because they're just living life, being happy and shit. But it's not happiness. It's complete misery. And then looking at your, your platform and your fucking photographs validates it. That's their validation. So that's the part that really, really razzes me. Not Riz, which is jizz, razzes me because you all support it. So that's how it works in this fluctuation of cycle. Another party, another picture, another post. Look at how happy we are. Another party, another picture, another post. Here we go again. Every fucking year, it's the same fucking boring ass shit. Nobody grows. Nothing fucking changes except for you get richer, we get fed a bunch of bullshit lies, and then you run to the bank saying anybody can do it if I can do it. And then nobody's platform grows except for people in the fucking elite network because now there is a gatekeeper called the Democratic Party. And that's the fucking truth because if you're not a fucking villain, you don't go viral. Because that's the network. It's all villains. Now tell me how that's working out in your, in your home life. Because whether you're on the internet or whether you're not on the internet is directly fact, affecting your emotional well-being. Because there is such thing as called the collective consciousness. The collective consciousness is if there's one person who's happy and a uh, hundred people who are miserable. Imagine having that one person hold the weight of a hundred people. Are you going to stay happy or are you going to just cry out that you are happy and lie to everybody? That's why people sell out because then they get caught up in going to the left, which is all corruption. Well, if you can't beat them, join them, they say. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not going to fucking work for me because I'm a mother. These other women aren't mothers. They were pretend moms because they want a meal ticket. They want the money ticket. They want the, uh, the facade of being a mom because it's the carrot chaser. This is worst carrot chasing in history. First you get the boyfriend, then you get the ring, then you get the clout, then you get the, the parties and the charity events. Then you tell everybody how you're so sophisticated. Convincing, 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 convincing. You convince him to marry your ass. You marry his ass. You get a dog. Then you get married, have a kid. And now you're sealed the deal for your fucking future because now you got half the money. And that's literally the formula. And all they have to do is get their hair and makeup done and a fancy fucking outfit. And this is all of them. And they sound sweet. Well, that bitch abuses and violates millions of men and women across the globe who are considered peasants. So you go take a look at Gary Vaynerchuk's content and what he speaks to, where he came from, what he tries to educate you on. Then you go take a look at that cunt bitch Mona Van's platform and you take a look and see what she's up to. And you tell me if that's a fucking match. No, you fucking go take a look, a real look, at how ugly she is on the inside and the fucking outside. How abusive she is to everybody she comes into contact with. Not to mention, she's a fucking Arab. And she's a fucking Persian. An Arab and a Persian? And you still believe in that shit? Well, she then tries to go to his content creator people in, their, in his community and tries to convince them that he's the bad guy. And that's a good relationship for you as a community? As a world? I mean, Art Basel, you are a bunch of pieces of shit. I saw what you did last year and I saw what you did the year before. 
You are a bunch of fucking dumb ass, fake ass losers. Do you hear me? I'm going to do whatever it fucking takes to close your ass down because of what you've done. You hear me? Do you fucking hear me? DeSantis is watching. You are fucking evil. You're destroying the culture of Miami. You are fucking evil, millennial Gen Zs. And I'm going to tell every fucking thing, good luck today. I'm going to make sure that I stay all up in that shit to call each and every one of you out for showing up at Mona Van's fucking speech last night. That's your future because you agreed. You laughed when she laughed. You said yes when she told you to think something. That's called a sellout. That's called buying into what she's fucking selling because she's got fucking fake ass tits. She ain't American. She's fucking Persian. Anyway, that's what I have for you on that subject associated to whore Melissa Wood and the whore sector of entrepreneurship. It's a dark space. And you men loved it in the beginning. You fucking pervert fucks who are all my age, by the way. The fact that I'm the one out of all of our age generation is sitting here single is fucking absolutely disgusting. It's absolutely fucking disgusting that you all turned your fucking backs on me. I'm talking to every fucking man out there. This bitch ain't available. I'm with Gary V. But you want to know that there were 10 plus years where I've been fucking single. And all you motherfuckers my age turned your fucking backs on me. A real fucking woman, a real fucking winner, and all you wanted to fucking do is go fuck some porn ass bitch with big fake titties. Anyways, that's all I have for you on this conversation. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. And I hope you have a fucking horrible time at, at Art Basel. Hope you shit your pants, Mona Van.